Hi, my name is Dave Blask. I'm a cancer chronobiologist at Tulane University School of Medicine in New Orleans. I've been working in the area of the circadian regulation of cancer growth and metabolism and how light at night suppresses that process and alters that process through the suppression of melatonin. My role here at the uh, workshop is to present the evidence from the IARC meeting in 2007 uh, with regard to animal studies. Uh, I was the chairman of the subgroup on experimental animal studies during that meeting. What I'm going to be focusing on in this session is the role of night, light at night as a disruptor of the circadian system. And I'll, and I'll teach you, I'll give you a little tutorial on what we're talking about when we're talking about the circadian system and circadian rhythmicity. But we're really talking about the ability of light at night to break our internal timing mechanism, which is primarily located in a specific part of the brain, and how that has an impact on cancer development and growth. I, I show this just, just to emphasize to you that at night, the world is awash in light at night, or what some people refer to as light pollution. And this is a very important point because when we, as Paul talked about the shift work data, all that shift work data really sort of is a surrogate for light at night exposure. We're thinking about shift work. What is shift work? Well, shift work at night involves exposure to light at night. This is a scheme, uh, a diagram that shows you the relationship of the internal clock indicated here in blue. This is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and since there's two of them, we call it the suprachiasmatic nuclei, the, or the SCN. And this is an, an endogenous clock that's a, a self-sustaining oscillator. And it wouldn't matter if an organism, such as a human, was in a light-dark cycle or not. It could be a completely dark room with no external cues, and this clock runs on its own. On its, own. It's, it's an endogenous, autonomous clock. So if you were to look at certain rhythms, like the most, one of the most obvious ones that we can all relate to, the sleep-wake cycle, there would be alternating um, periods of sleep and waking under those circumstances as an index or an output of what this endogenous clock is doing. But what happens with this endogenous clock in the absence of external cues, and particularly lighting cues, it's not a very well synchronized clock. It runs, in humans, a little bit slow. And what you'll see is that the light, the, one of the roles of light is to reset the clock every day. And so what happens is, is that light coming into the eyes is sensed by specific specialized photoreceptors in the retina that actually sh sh uh, transmit information about the light-dark cycle to this part of the brain where the clock is. This blue suprachiasmatic nucleus eventually talks to another organ located in the brain through a very complicated uh, neural route involving the brain stem and the spinal cord uh, and eventually back to the brain. This is called the pineal gland. And this is a gland that makes a hormone called melatonin. And melatonin is one of the key outputs of the circadian system. In fact, it is the most reliable, reproducible indicator of the status of this clock. And as you'll see in a moment, it not only is a message to all the cells and tissues and organs of the body to indicate what time of day it is. Because all we, we think all these entities have receptors that specifically respond to melatonin that's spit out into the bloodstream during the night. Melatonin is made during the night. As we'll see, melatonin not only has this timekeeping activity or mechanism, 
but actually has very important and potent anti-cancer activity. So it's a timing hormone that is an anti-cancer hormone. Here are alternating light-dark cycles, okay? So it's periods of light, periods of dark, periods of light. And you can see here is an example of, a human, of human melatonin spiking during the middle of the night, during each of these light-dark cycles. And this is precisely coordinated every 24 hours because the clock that's running that rhythm is now entrained by the light-dark light zone. You can see that the peak of melatonin, its rise and its peak and its fall is actually coincident with sleep. And I'm going to make a very important point about this. This sleep is not necessary for melatonin to rise during darkness, okay? Sleep is not necessary for the melatonin to be expressed at night. Darkness is. When you introduce light, so this is a second effect of light. Light entrains or synchronizes the circadian system in general and the melatonin signal in particular. So it's timed precisely every 24 hours. But if the second effect of light, if it's introduced at a time where it shouldn't be there, i.e. during the night, it will immediately suppress the production of melatonin within seconds. Absolutely within seconds. And if the light is bright enough, it will do this completely. And if the light stays on for the whole night, you will never produce a melatonin surge. So the melatonin signal will never be manifested. So this is one important reason why light at night is such an important issue when thinking about shift work. The intensity of light is how bright the light is at night is very, very important. The brighter the light, the more suppressive of melatonin, right? The lighting that's on in hospitals where healthcare workers, nurses particularly work, that would be enough to suppress melatonin to a significant degree. And there are different individual sensitivities to that as well. The other aspect of what's important about light at night is the wavelength of the light. And specifically with regard to the circadian system in general, and melatonin in particular, it's the short wavelengths that are most active in affecting the circadian system, so in the blue range particularly. As you go down towards, in the visible spectrum, to the long wavelengths towards the red, this is less so. In fact, red light has little to no effect on the circadian system in general and melatonin in particular.